Hey everybody, sitting here, sitting preparedness. Now, this funky looking mess of jute twine and sticks before you is actually called the, the Mojave Scissor Snare Trap. Okay, just for those who didn't know, simple trap to make. Don't let the complexity of what this looks like, if you think it looks complex, it's really not. It's super simple. Um, so we're going to go through how to make it, some trapping considerations and tips and whatnot I have for you guys, and then we're going to set it off to show you guys. So this version of the trap, same basic setup you're going to use. There's two types of triggers you can use, per se. You can use a counterweight, and you can use a spring pull method. I personally like the counterweight method, which is hooked up here. Okay, I like the counterweight method because you pretty much set it up anywhere you want, um, as long as there's a branch sticking out. Spring pull method, eh, kind of varies because a lot of people will say, well, the spring pull you can put anywhere you want. True, but when you cut that live tree, it starts losing its springiness, at least in my area, in my experience, relatively quickly. And you don't know within the next 48 to 72 hours, is that tree still going to be as springy as it was before? Just kind of a side note there. Now, before you go in and build this, guys, you want to really consider what kind of game is in your area. Okay, I'm in a typical forest in Michigan, so there's going to be rabbits, raccoons, squirrels, chipmunks, possums. Kind of those are the five main targets you can get with this trap. Again, you can size this up or down accordingly. Yes, you can catch field mice and rats with this, but one, the parasites to carry and the amount of calories you get from them, to me, not really worth it. Again, that's my personal opinion. Yes, I would eat one in a survival situation if I really had to, but not my first choice. Moving on, though. So, we know the game in the area. What does the game like to eat, okay? And this kind of behooves you to carry at least some kind of food item in your 72-hour bag, your get-home bag, obviously it's going to be rations. You can get away with like a small tub of peanut butter, even better, because all those animals I listed love peanut butter, okay? Plus, the thing is this too, if you're going to go say, oh, hey, let's use this pine cone as bait, which would kind of be crappy bait, but let's just say let's use that, right? What's the difference between that pine cone and your trap versus all these pine cones around on the forest floor around your trap? Nothing. Most animals won't go near this if there's food sources around it. But if you use a visual attractant, so say we find some delicious red raspberries, okay, and this is just surrounded by a bunch of tree nuts of some kind, walnuts, pine cones, whatever, right? So those red berries, one, they're red, so they stand out, so you get a visual attractant. Two, the smell of those berries is going to attract animals as well. And three, well, it's different. It's unique. The animals are going to go for that more so than these hard nuts laying on the ground, right? So. You got that built. Now let's talk about building a trap, or excuse me, you got the bait. Now let's talk about building a trap. So for this arc right here, simply just two green sticks. I usually cut all these sticks at two foot and kind of work my way down to how I, how big I want the trap to be, what I'm trying to get, what I can get away with setting up the trap with. That's being that right there, okay? So the arc, just two green sticks, push down in a U fashion, the scissor. Straight stick as possible, guys. This obviously is not as straight as possible, but it still works. Now, quick side note here, I know in most other videos we'll say you gotta cut the notches down here to match up, and the sticks are supposed to be touching down there together. I did that, it works okay. I also did this with too. I don't know if you guys can really see if the camera would like to focus. There we go. They're pretty much crisscrossed. That's what they are, they're crisscrossed. Is it correct? No. But does it work? Yes. So if you don't have a you know, two perfect sticks, and if they don't line up correctly with the notches and having to worry about all that stuff like that, it, it's going to work either way, guys. So, irregardless, don't worry about it. So, you got your V-knot, or V-knot, you got your V-sticks, you got your arcway, the H structure back here, okay? Just two simple stakes, pound them on the ground, you find the height of your arc back here, line up the middle stick right there. I personally, if this will focus quick enough for you guys, there you go. Right on the back of that stick, behind the knot, okay, there is an actual notch cut out. So that top trigger stick right there sits in there nice and tight. So you, when you have a windy day like it is now, you're not going to have the problem of that stick rolling around and sitting off the trap with nothing in it and then your bait being taken. So just kind of precaution there. Now, speaking of the actual main trigger stick, uh, stick excuse me, which is this, and I'll put my finger near it because I'll probably set it off. This right here, okay. You can either put the berries on there by stabbing them, you can coat it in peanut butter, you can do all sorts of stuff with that trigger stick right there. Key point here though, down here at the bottom, ooh, touched that, that was scary. Key point down here at the bottom, you guys notice that the trigger stick is sitting on t some type of half stick or bark, okay? It's actually half a stick, not really bark. 
But the thing is this though, you don't want this trigger stick being weighed down or messed with where it sinks in the ground doesn't go off, right? So, moving out with everything we know, say we built this, got the counterweight up there, main line coming here, obviously the line's gonna be tied to this one, you wanna cut notches above and below so the string doesn't move too much, same thing over here, along with these sticks down here as well, and down here as well, okay? So the strings don't move around a lot, or if at all, okay? So your main line's gonna be tied to this stick here, from right to left, there's gonna be a little loop on this one, right here, still attached to the trigger stick here. Again, there's a notch on that too, leads up to the main line, and here we go. So, say Mr. Squirrel, for example, sees your red berries, oh, those are delicious, hoppity hop hop, come over, start nibbling on the bait, here we go, boom, caught. That's simple, guys, it's really not a hard trap to design at all. And another quick tip before I end this video, guys. Yes, it is on top of a dead branch right here. But what I did was take my hand and my knife, cleaned off all this so it's nice and smooth. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I think you can. It's nice and smooth up there, or as smooth as possible. That way I know this natural cordage, which does bind up on bark really well, isn't going to bind up on this. So, anyways, guys, hope you learned something from this. It's a simple trap. Get out there, practice it, guys. Put it in your tool belt for later on especially in the bush track community. And always, guys, stay frosty, prep up, and God bless.